The overhead guard is the metal roof that helps protect the operator from falling objects. It is supported by posts at each corner of the cab. Before operating, make sure there are no broken... The assist grips are fixed to the front posts of the cab. They are one of the three things you always hold when entering or exiting the cab using three points of contact. The mast is powered by at least two hydraulic cylinders. The lift cylinder uses hydraulic power to extend the movable rails of the upright, raising or lowering the mast before operating the forklift. Forklifts have headlights to warn other workers that the truck is in the area. The lift cylinder uses hydraulic power to extend the movable rails of the upright, raising or lowering the mast. Check for any fluids that may be present on the floor. Employee exposure to wet floors or spills and clutter can lead to slips, trips, falls, and other possible injuries. Wet surfaces promote the growth of mold, fungi, and Inspect the tire condition by checking for any balding. Damaged tires threaten the safety of the machine and the operator, and need to be replaced as soon as possible. Inspect the tire condition by checking for any damaged tires threaten the safety of the machine and the operator. And inspect the tire condition by checking for any baldings. Damaged tires threaten the safety of the machine and the operator and need to be replaced as soon as possible. Inspect the tire damaged tires threaten the safety of the machine and the operator. Check the condition of Regular use causes forks to bend, crack, and wear down over time. Skipping your fork inspections can lead to a snapped fork, dropped load, and an all-around bad day. Check the condition. OSHA Standard 29 CFR 1910.178E2 requires that if a load can fall back onto the operator, the employer may ensure that signs and labels warn employees of dangers. OSHA recognizes three different types of warning labels. Confirm that the operator's area is clear of debris that could interfere with operations. Keep floors clean and clear of debris. The cleaner and less obstructed your floors are, the better. Spills, pat Check if the forklift is parked. If a fork tip or heel is left up, pedestrians stepping over can hook their foot underneath and fall. This is grab the assist grip with use three points of contact either two hands and a foot or two grab the ball above your right armrest at any time to readjust your position in the forklift check if the forklift is parked properly the parking brake on the forklift needs to be on check if the forklift is parked properly the engine needs to be in the off position put the seat belt on Turn the engine on by turning the key. Check if the reverse horn is working. Turn off the parking brake. Lift the fork six inches above the ground. Tilt the fork fully backward and depress. Conduct an area inspection. Place both hands on the steering wheel. Make sure the fork is Press the trigger button on the left-hand controller where your left index finger is located. Make sure to stay center in your lane and to approach corners gradually. Press the trigger button. Shift the forward reverse lever to forward and release the parking brake. Place your right hand on the assist grip 
and push the reverse horn button. Gradually let go of the brake and push the left hand controller trigger. Drive the forklift backward into the center of the aisle where you initially parked. Shift the forward reverse lever forward to switch the forklift gear into drive. Then drive the forklift forward. Make sure to come to a complete stop before changing directions. Hold the floor guides and drive towards the marked destination. Make sure to come to a complete stop before changing directions and pay attention. Pull the forward reverse lever towards you to switch the forklift gear into reverse. When the front wheels are about one meter into the corner, confirm to turn. When the front wheels pass the corner, turn the steering wheel quickly. up into the parking spot. Shift the forward reverse lever to neutral and set your parking gear. Let down the floor to the ground and until the max. Finally, turn off the engine. Turn on the engine, lift the fork, tilt the mast, shift the forward reverse lever, and reverse the parking gear. Approach and align the forklift into the pack. To press the brake pedal to stop the forklift 8 to 13 inches before the pack. Apply the parking brake and shift the forward reverse into neutral. Position the mast to the vertical position. Conduct an area inspection. Press the brake button. Shift the forward reverse lever into forward and release the parking. Move forward slowly. Insert the forks completely into the pallet and deploy. Apply the parking brake and shift the forward reverse into neutral. Lift the pallet about 4 inches above where it is initially placed and tilt the mast. Conduct an area inspection. Shift to reverse and release the parking brake. Drive and deliver the package in the minimap location. Hold the floor guide and drive towards the marked destination. 
Make sure to come to a complete stop before changing directions and pay attention to the floor direction sign. Stop 8 to 13 inches before the pallet stand. Apply the parking brake and shift the hold. Position the mast to the vertical position. Lift the pallet about 6 inches above the loading position. Conduct an area inspection. Shift the forward reverse lever to forward and release the parking brake. Move forward slowly until the pallet is directly above the unloading position. To press the brake pedal to stop, apply the parking brake and shift gear to neutral. Lower the pallet slowly and conduct an area inspection. Shift to reverse and release the parking brake. Reverse until the fork distance to the pallet is about 13 inches. Apply the parking brake and shift to neutral. Lower the forks 6 inches above the ground and fully tilt the mast back. Conduct an area inspection. Shift to reverse and release the parking brake. Approach slowly and square up to the pallet stand. 